Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Got my wife's 2012 883 Sports Group here on the lift today. And the other day when she was riding it, the battery light came on. So I put it on the charger. Um, we're going to go through the troubleshooting process of checking to see if your bike's battery voltage, or check to see if your bike's charging system is still good. Now to get to the battery on your fuel-injected Sportsters, it's going to be under this teardrop side cover. On the left side of your motorcycle, just pop this right on off of there. And then lift it up, and you should be able to, might have to wiggle it around a little bit. Once you lift it up there, you should be able to slide it out of that little plastic rubber grommet down there. Just like that. <clears throat> now, first thing we're going to check is the battery voltage. So we're going to take our voltmeter, and we're going to put it on DC. If it's not labeled AC or DC, there's going to be this little straight line or a squiggly line. The squiggly line is for AC. That's the voltage in your house. You want DC, the straight line one. Now we're going to check, since we can't get to the negative side of the terminal, we're going to check to a solid ground and check to the battery. And as you can see, it's reading 12.8 volts. And this thing's been on the trickle charger for two days, so that's good. It means our battery is most likely good. Next, we're going to start the bike up and see how much voltage it's producing while it's running. Okay, while the battery is running, we're going to check the same voltage there. You see, we're sitting at about 12.2. 12.2, That's kind of low. Give it a little RPM. doesn't climb up, so therefore that means we are not charging. So, since we don't have a charging voltage going to the battery, uh, we are going to move forward uh, near the oil filter, and we're going to check the voltage coming out of the charging system. Okay, so right here, this is your oil filter. This is the front frame rail, front wheel for reference. There was a quick connect right here, right below this engine mount. And uh, you'll see two here. This one's your O2 sensor. You can just put that one back down there. And then this big kind of heavy gauge, rubbery looking one, this is the plug coming out of the regulator rectifier. The next stop for these wires is essentially the battery. So we're gonna see if we have voltage here. So this little plastic connector should just push off with your fingers. Just like that. Then we're going to pull it apart, hopefully. Might have to wiggle it a little bit. There we go, came apart. So first thing we're going to check, on the plug that goes to the frame rail here, uh, when we check that, same voltmeter settings, we're sitting at 12.1 volts. Hopefully you can see that. So this is basically the battery voltage we're checking. Um, and it doesn't matter if you get these leads backwards, they'll just read a negative voltage, but your numbers will still be right. So now we're going to start it up. And while it's idling, we're going to put the meter leads on each one of these pins, careful not to touch them across. And we're going to see if we have a voltage coming out of the regulator rectifier. We have no power coming from the regular rectifier. So we definitely have a component in our charging system that is not working. Now before we condemn the regular rectifier to death, let's move to the other side and check the output of the stator. So now we are over here on the right side of the motorcycle. For reference, this is the front exhaust pipe. It's a little warm. This is your front frame rail. And right here, you're gonna find the plug from your stator. Your stator is what actually produces the charging current. So we're gonna pop this, ow, Jesus, that's hot. We're gonna pop this little plug off of there, or the cap off of there. That was really hot, that burned me. And we're gonna pull the plug apart. So the wire here that goes up, that goes to our reg rectifier. This comes from our stator. Or now with this component, we are gonna set our meter to AC, which is going to be the squiggly line. Okay. 
case this helps in any way, I have a different meter here. This is going to look more like the meter you have at your house. You see we have DC, now we have AC, and we are set to AC on here. Wipe the dust off the screen here, try to get the meter to stay in place. There we go. So now we're going to put the meter leads into the plug here. We'll have to hold them in place. But obviously it doesn't show anything, but we're going to start the bike up, hold the meter leads in place against the plug, and we're going to see if we have any voltage coming out. And remember, AC voltage. It's the only part of the motorcycle you check for AC voltage. That voltage is too low, so we're replacing the stator too. This is an unplugged stator, so it should much read a much higher voltage than that. If the stator was under load or plugged in, this would be the correct voltage. To remove your regular rectifier, like I said, make sure all your zip ties are cut, everything's free on the other side. <clears throat> then we're going to take a 3 8 ratchet, and we're going to lefty-loosey these two bolts off of here. For clarification, this vent rib looking thing, that is the regular rectifier. On the Harleys, it's right behind your front wheel, hanging out there in the air. On your metric bikes, it might be there, it might be near the battery, it might be under the seat, who knows? You're gonna have to check your owner's manual and uh, good luck. But then, lefty loosey this top one right off of here. That bolt out of there. Pretty much once you get it loose, it'll almost fall right off of there. Take that last bolt out. Try and walk the wires right on up out of there. The first one right there. There's that one. And then uh should be able to slide the other wire right on out of there. They're two different links, two different plugs, so you can't get them wrong. But now, we'll just wait for our replacement part to arrive. We'll compare resistance just to give it a double check to make sure that was really it. And then we'll install the new one. Here's the old one, here's the new one. So first thing we're gonna do, set our meter to ohms. Checking with the leads. Yes, it works. Okay, we're gonna take the round plug. This is the one that comes from the, um, Stator. We're gonna check for ohms of resistance here on the new one. Watch the meter screen over there. And it says 3.29, 3.1, 3.1, close enough. Now, we'll check our old one for comparison purposes there. Uh, that's a really, that's a really high number. Tells me it's probably our rig rectifier. Um, that's a strangely high number. So now we will check the uh, battery side. And on the new one, it shows it's open. Switch our leads, which may very well be normal. Without an electrical print, you're never gonna know what it's supposed to be. You really have to have, oh, there we go. Really have to have one to compare it to. And it shows 3.4. 3 ohms is pretty good for most any electrical component. And then our old one. Yeah. Apparently I'm not good at mirror lead operation today. Uh, 54. That's a lot of resistance. So the old one, definitely bad. So, we're going to call the old one bad. New one's good. Uh, of course, the new one's good. We're using that for comparison purposes. And now we are going to reinstall it on the bike. So we got a new rig rectifier here. We're going to uh, slide the electrical connectors uh, back. Oh. First, we're going to cut this twist tie off or take this twist tie off right here. It came on the new ones because the wires have to go in different directions. So square one's going to the left or the left side of the bike or the far side based on your camera angle. We'll slide that one up in place. Round one is going to the right side or near side based on your camera angle. I'm gonna slide those down in place there. 
And once you push your wires through, which are strangely stubborn, there we go. You can slide your rig rectifier up in place there. Make sure none of your wires are pinched or in any weird locations. All right, there they're started in there. Now we can get the socket wrench into the, the ratchet into the socket and wrench that thing back in there. Get the top one in by a few threads and then get the bottom one in by a few threads. And then snug them both up. And now for stator removal. To remove the left side foot peg mount, you have two Allen screws here. They each take a 5 16 Allen wrench. I have an Allen socket in place of an Allen wrench. Uh, it's just a lot handier and a lot stronger. Wait a minute. There we go. You don't actually need an extension this long. I'm just doing this so I can get my hands out of the camera shot. Lefty Lucy, that one free. Hop on over the other side. Lefty Lucy, that one free. Full disclosure, I broke both these bolts free before I did this, before I hit record. So, saves a lot of grief. So hold your foot peg up a little bit. Lefty Lucy, that bolt all the way on out of there. Then, Lefty Lucy, the other one all the way on out of there. Probably blocking all the light there, aren't I? All right. To remove your clutch cover, your derby cover, you're gonna to wanna to take these six screws out of here. However, they were originally a Torx bit and I replaced them with Allen screws because I kind of hate Torx bits. I don't remember what size Torx bit it was, but I'll look it up and put it right there on the screen. Cool. Now, the Allen screws I have in here take a 5 30 seconds Allen bit. So we're gonna break each one of these free. You wanna break them all free because that way you don't have one that's just going crooked and making it extra difficult to get that last screw or two free. Once you get them all free, you can lefty loosey them all out of there. My advice would be leave the top one and the bottom one in for now. We're just doing that to hold the whole thing in place. Now, take the top one out. Why the top one? I don't know. You can take the bottom one out. Take one of them out. Hold the clutch cover in with your other hand. Then take the final screw out. You shouldn't get any oil out of here if your bike is up straight. If your bike is leaned over on an angle, uh, you're going to get oil out of this sucker. Then, if it doesn't easily pop off of here, you can take a flathead screwdriver, wipe her clean. I recommend doing this down at the bottom in case you scratch it. Just put it up in there and twist a little bit. Cover's gonna fall off of there. Hopefully a little more, less graceful than that. There was a hex bit and a spring that needed to come out of there. Hopefully you've got that thing somewhere because that sits right back up in there on those little flats. That's what holds the adjuster tight. We're not gonna worry about that for the time being. But we're gonna take that piece off and we're gonna put it inside our clutch cover. Now, to replace our seal, we're gonna take a knife and put it underneath here and peel this seal right on out. Or maybe we can use our fingernails. Peel that off. If you're saving it for some reason because you're replacing the cover, set it in a clean location, set it off to the side. When loosening your clutch cable, take your clips off or cut whatever zip ties, lift your rubber slinky up. Try to get it out of the way. Hold on to the cable with two wrenches. Loosen the jam nut up. Spin the jam nut way down out of the way. Then you can take this bottom section, which should spin, and thread it all the way in. Give you all the slack you need on the cable. That will help you get the clutch cable unhooked at either end. 
Clutch cable removal. There's a snap ring right there. I swear to God it's there. Getting this shot has been a bit of a challenge. Take your snap ring pliers. There we go. Take the snap ring off, just like that. Set that in a safe location. Remove the pin. Whoop! Catch it as it falls to the floor. Now you can take your whole lever, pull it forward. Take up that slob in there, pull it to the left, and you can take the cable out of the groove, slide it all the way out of here. To remove the cable, just take this plastic pin right on out of here. Cable comes right out. All right, take your smaller screwdriver, crank that all the way in there too. This little nut is gonna wanna fall out of here. You can actually take it out in your hand there. Oh. Uh, the screw might have to hold the screw in the center there and thread them apart. Take that, set this in a clean location. This is internal mechanical parts. You want to keep these super, super clean. Now, you can take this whole big disc sucker right out the back here. Here's what you do you then take this whole big disc. Rotate it 180 degrees. You're going to get almost there, and this piece is going to come off this little lug here. Do not drop this inside. It hooks right off the end of the cable. If you drop that inside, I'm not sure how far it'll go. I think the clutch will stop it. If it doesn't, you have to take this cover off. If you're taking this cover off already, it's okay. So, again, internal engine parts. We're going to put these over here on a clean rag. To get the clutch cable out, we have to undo the clutch tension here on the adjuster. So we'll take the jam nut. So there's what looks like two nuts together and then one nut down here. This top, there's the top one here. And then there's that one that's pressed up against it. We're going to break that one that's pressed up against it free. Somewhere or another, it's a 12 and 13 millimeter. I'll make this stuff up. i just tell you how it is. Spin them on down there. Spin that jam nut on free. Now, you can take the bottom one, it should spin, and you can run the adjustment all the way in. Hopefully you can see this. And you should be able to twist this sucker on out of here. Comes out just like that. You can just take this O-ring, pick it right up off of here. So this nut here in the back, that's your primary chain case drain plug. This one here in the front is the primary chain tensioner. To change the oil, you want to remove the one in the back. So take a 5 8 wrench, lefty loosey that on out of there. This one's gonna come right out. And hardly any oil is going to come out because this is actually the second time I did this because the first time I forgot to hit record. So, get a little bit more oil pouring on out of there. Set your drain plug in a clean location. Oh, while we're at, make sure you check the magnet on here. This one had a little bit of fuzz on it when I took it off, which was just metal shavings. Not a huge deal. It's just parts of your clutch wearing down. So clean that off, set that off to another location there. To loosen up your primary chain tensioner. So there's a big nut on here. Use the adjustable wrench. You should probably use a real wrench. And that quarter inch Allen goes down underneath and break that sucker free. Also going to move very free because the second time I did this. Then just back it off a little ways. That'll let the puck drop down off the tensioner, which will make the chain make the primary cover easier to remove. To remove your shifter, locate your quarter inch Allen wrench or Allen socket. In this case, we're gonna put in our 3 8 ratchet. Before you take it off of there, um, you may want to put a mark on it. That way you can remember where it was. So uh, I'm gonna put a mark on here at 12 o'clock. And uh, you probably can't see on camera a little bit, but I can see the black mark on top of the black finish on there. 
take this quarter inch Allen here. Get your ratchet to work properly. Break that bolt free. Then spin her all the way on out of there. You have to take the bolt all the way out to get it off of there. Or I'm sorry, to get the shifter off. That was kind of a redundant statement. Because there's a little notch in here. So if all is well and good, you should be able to just grab the shifter and pull it off towards you. It has a spline shaft on it. Let's say it doesn't move that easy. You can possibly get behind it with a big screwdriver here, risk scratching your primary cover, or you can get in here with a large screwdriver and twist it a little bit, and this C-clamp portion will open up a little bit, and hopefully it'll slide right off of there. So, we're gonna take out all these Allen screws. It takes a 3 16 Allen wrench. Put her in there all the way deep, break her free. Cool. All the screws are out. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Now, we can take the cover off. Put your fingers in here, give it a little pull. Nope. Might have to give it a little tap from the side. Oh, wait. Take a little rubber ring off the shaft there. Then take your rubber hammer. Keep jiggling around and tapping on it. Eventually she'll come free. Don't use a metal hammer on it. It's not a good idea. Slide it straight off of there. But dun 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 all right let's see how she's looking in here chain's still in pretty good shape now no real side to side movement tensioner puck that plastic's got some wear on it i'll probably be investing in a new one of those yeah just to be on the safe side sprockets are good Everything else, starter gear looks good. Uh, yeah, everything looks in pretty good shape. Uh, if your intent was just to replace this gasket, you should be able to peel the old one off of here. Ta -da! Some say these are reusable. It's got 20,000 miles on it. Get another one, don't be cheap. Your friends will make fun of you because your bike leaks all the time. They don't have to hear the Harley jokes. So what you can do from here is put some degreaser or engine cleaner or whateverness on a rag. Uh, scrub all this down really good. Any old gasket pieces, parts, or residue need to come off of here. Uh, that way it'll be, and the same with this outer cover. That way it'll be nice and clean and nothing else will be there besides the gasket. So it'll seal up nice and tight and it won't leak on you. Okay, so we have to make a special tool uh, to get the clutch spring off. Uh, there's a diaphragm spring and then there's a little snap ring that's holding it on there. And Motion Pro and Jim's and everybody else sell a special tool. Well, I'm a big fan of Motion Pro. I'm also a big fan of saving money. So, what I'm going to do is I have a three inch PVC cap here. I picked up a local hardware store. This was like $3 or with inflation, by the time you see it, it'll be $8. Um, so I'm gonna cut the top of this off. Whoosh. And uh, then I'm going to take a piece of flat stock drill hole in it and I can take that little hole and I'll demonstrate over there on the bike. It'll work just like the tool, I promise you. And you'll be able to get the snap ring pliers in there to get the snap ring out. So, uh, if you had a piece of three inch PVC pipe that you could cut off, that would work as well. I didn't and I wasn't buying a six foot stick of it. So, three inch cap. I'm gonna cut the top of it off in the vise. Let's take a look. All right, so I'm cutting this off with a cutoff wheel right here. I could use a hacksaw, but it wouldn't throw cool sparks. So, wear safety glasses. Don't burn your garage down. <laughs> See? 
See how much cooler that looked? Now, drill a hole in the center of it. Use a mechanical center punch to get a little dimple there so your drill bit doesn't walk all over the place. Eye protection again. Don't touch it, it's probably hot. Remember, when you're using a file, they only work in one direction. You don't want to do this. It's not a nail file. If you do that, you'll build up a bunch of metal chips inside here and dull it out, and then your file will be worthless. So you have this little hex spring nut, whatever we're gonna call it, nut that the spring goes over top of. This was part of your clutch. It's the same thread as this shaft right here. So we're gonna use that as like our jack bolt. Our goal here is we're trying to take off this outer snap ring. We're going to have to push this uh, pressure plate in, then take this snap ring and flick it up. Take your now shortened PVC disc. Take your little metal spanner there. Take this nut, thread it up on there. Should thread on nice and easy. I'm actually holding the nut on the back, or the screw on the back side of my finger, keep it from turning. We're just gonna tighten it up until it all seats into place there. Take our flathead screwdriver in there, take our three quarter inch wrench, and tighten it up. This won't take a lot of force. You're just trying to compress that spring in there as if you were pulling in the clutch. You probably can't tell from the camera angle, but I can actually see the spring pushing in a little bit. So I know I'm sitting in pretty good shape there. So then there's a little ring inside there. Push that back so you have a little bit of clearance with the snap ring. And flick the snap ring up. There we go. Now you can just walk this snap ring out. There are some special Eaton style snap ring pliers for this, but honestly, you can just walk this out with a flathead screwdriver. Have a little patience with it. Remember, this is a no special tools thing. So, there's another little ring right here behind this. So we're going to stop right here, and I'm gonna take a picture with my phone. Boop. That way I remember which way it goes back in. Now, I do have a shop manual for this, but still, you can never, ever be too careful. Now that that's, this snap ring is off of there, you can hold the screw with your screwdriver again. Take your three-quarter inch wrench, hold the nut, or back the nut off, or turn the screw in. Whichever one works better for you and your brain. All of a sudden, it'll get really loose. There we go, set that stuff off to the side. Take your PVC ring off of there. Thread this nut off. Take your shaft, set it off to the side. Take your snap ring, set it off the side. Take this spacer ring thingamajigger here, whatever it's called. Ooh, the pressure plate kind of locked onto it. We're going to be very careful with this. So this ring here was still caught in the groove a little bit and it was still loaded up by the pressure plate spring. So don't do that. Now I'm going to have to take a little file and deburr this sucker, but otherwise it looks okay. So be very cautious when removing and reinstalling this, whatever this ring is called. Now from here, whoop, got a little ahead of my Explanation there. From here, you can grab that center shaft and pull the clutch pack right on out of there. It may or may not all come out with it. Sometimes the oil sticks them together, sometimes not so much. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our stop block right here, and we're gonna put that into the primary chain. That way, we can lefty-loosey this sucker off of here. Now there's a bunch of red Loctite underneath this sucker, uh, so you're gonna have to heat it up. Heat gun works, propane torch works better, Map gas torques, work, torch works even better than that. So what we're really going to do is we're going to heat this nut up until it kind of starts changing colors. And after you do it for a while, you'll see oil and then Loctite start bubbling out of these threads. 
usually at that point you're ready to put an impact on it or a really big socket and breaker bar and uh, lefty loosey that sucker off of there remember this is conventional thread so it is lefty loosey on this one i believe in using an impact because of that ugga dugga fashion chugga 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 helps break that free and breaks all the uh, loctite free so let's heat her up Okay, now that it's heated up, we have our inch and one eighth socket here on an impact and just lefty loosey that sucker off of there. Now, I have the bike up in the air, that way I can lock the rear wheel in a little bit easier. So, that way I can rotate the rear wheel. And as you can see right here, I have a big extension into the rear wheel. Put that right around there, and we're going to use that as the lock. Also, the bike is in gear. Because you can't just use this primary chain lock, because we have the clutch pressure plate off of there, and we have the clutch off, so there is no lock between the inner and outer housing. Now remember, this is extremely important. So from here, we're going to take this nut off. Now you have to remember, this is extremely important. This is what's called a left-handed thread. So it's going to be righty, loosey, lefty, tighty. So we're gonna take our impact on a lower setting because that one's not nearly as tight. And we are gonna to go to the right. Check to make sure we're going the right direction. And you can really get away with a big socket on this. Oh, it's a uh, inch and three sixteenth socket. There you go. And that comes right on off of there. Now the nut comes out. And this spacer comes out. It's like a spring washer. Uh, if you look at this thing, on one side of it, it actually says out. Out. Trust me, it's right there. You can't see it. When you put that on, make sure out is out. Now, everything's off of there. Remember, this might still be warm. We're good, it's been a little bit, so it cooled down. So both of these are gonna have to slide off of here at the same time. However, this left one is being held on by a magnet, or the magnetic force of the stator. Take your stop block out. So that one might seem like it fights you a wee little bit, and it might feel like there's a spring on there, trying to pull it back in. I promise you there isn't. So pull it out as far as you can. All of a sudden it'll get loose and that's when the magnets have kind of released. And you can just pick the whole sucker right up there just like that. And lo and behold, look at that burned up sucker right there. That is our problem. That is why we were not charging. So first, I'm gonna take a 5 16 Allen wrench here, or a 5 16 socket wrench, and take off this wire retainer clip that's right here. Now, to remove the stator off the engine, take a T20 Torx bit. Lefty loose these bolts out of here. I'm gonna break each one of them free. Make sure there's nothing weird and nothing fighting me. All right, and just lefty loosey those suckers on out of there. Now, whoop. I'll take the screws on out of there. Now we got new ones, but we're still gonna keep track of these until we're done, just in case there's something weird. And then essentially you can lift your stator right on off of here. So right there, it's free. You can see that uber burned up part. Wow, that sucker's really burned up. Um, uber burned up coil right there. Now, we just have to pull, unplug the wire on the other side, then unsnake it all the way out, then pull it on out of the uh, inner primary case there. Okay, we're now over here on the right side of the motorcycle, and for some reason, Harley ran the stator wire in an absurdly complicated manner, so we have to take the front pulley cover off. 
3 16 Allen wrench. I'll get two of these bolts off of here. Keep track of these because they're probably different lengths. I mean, there's only three. You could probably figure it out, but still. Woo! Ah, got ambitious when I tighten that one up. I don't know how much you can really see here. So we're gonna use the extension as a pointer. There is a zip tie right there. And we're gonna cut that zip tie. By the way, the wire is hanging out down here. Okay, here's the plan. So this wire runs up here, it runs behind the oil lines. Getting that thing back in there will be a pain unless we use a pole wire. So I have a scrap chunk of wire here this in the shot? Whoop, nope. See a scrap chunk of wire right here? Yes, right there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut the plug off of this thing. I was hoping I could pull the outer sheathing off, but I can't. Then we're going to take our pull wire and we're going to electrical tape it onto here. The idea behind this is then we go to pull the new wire through, uh, we can use this as a little bit of a tug wire. Might need an assistant, but we're going to wrap it around there and taper up with some electrical tape. Tape generously. All right. Now from there, we're going to take our needle nose pliers, our long ones. We're going to reach down there, we're going to grab that wire, and we're going to lift it up. Might have to feed a little in from the bottom, but you'll get it. Keep working at it. Here's what you do. Pull it all the way up through there. So you see right there, now we have the little pull wire in there. So from here, we're gonna go to the other side, pull the wire out from the inner primary case and pull it all the way through until this wire is, white wire is sticking out the other side. All right, from here, grab our, nope, tighter than that. Grab the back side of this thing and pull. Now pull carefully, carefullyer than that. And hopefully, there we go. Our little white wire, a little pull wire is right there. We'll just snip it off for now. There we go. Old stator has been removed. All right, let's put our new stator right up and on there. Slide her into place. Now, take our little pull wire and some electrical tape. Wrap that around there. Tape her on up real good so she'll pull nice and easy. Uh, then from there, this plug should barely fit through that hole. Start feeding it on in there. Should go to a point. Then we're gonna have to go over the other side, tug it a little bit, go this side, push a little bit, back and forth, you know. Okay, I have the wire pulled through to here. You can see it's still all attached right there. Now we're going to pull it down and hopefully we'll be able to get the slide behind the oil lines as it goes down in there. So we can push a little from the top, pull a little from the bottom. Might take some back and forth action with it. Try not to pull too hard or you'll pull your pull wire off and then you'll really be fighting with this thing. And there it is coming out the bottom. Pull it down tight. 
Now you can run this up across the bottom frame rail. So now you can see we've got this plug right here. So we'll peel our tape back off of this thing. And from there, we can plug it right into our stator. Put our clips back on. Now uh, we can push our rubber grommet through here, through the hole. If it doesn't go easily, you can put a little gear oil on that and it should help the rubber slide in there a little easier. But from there, we can take our little metal plate that came off of here, and our two little screws, clean everything up real good. All right. Now from here, we can put the metal clamp back on there. Next, we can reinstall the screws on the stator. You're gonna have to look behind it and line all the screws up. Now these take some medium strength thread locker. Luckily, the screws that came with this setup already have some thread locker on the threads. Now before you put your primary on, give everything good inspection. Make sure there's no crud down here in the bottom. Good and crud free. Uh, make sure everything looks good. Your shifter return springs, nothing looks damaged or like it's gonna come apart. Uh, no weird wear spots or anything. And if everything looks good, uh, you can take your primary setup, make sure it's super clean Why about the inside of your magnet? It might be off screen, but trust me, there can be a lot of metal crud down in there. You wanna wipe that clean. And from there, pick her up. Slide her onto, onto the splines. Remember, you have to do this all in one, is one piece. There we go, there we go. If it goes crooked or binds up, it won't go on there. If you put one side on too fast, it won't go on there. Whew. Careful, that magnet will pull it in and smash your fingertips. Now we're ready to put the nut back on the primary. Take your washer, make sure out is pointed towards out. Slide up on the nut there. And righty or lefty tighty that sucker into place. There we go. Now that's snug. Now we'll find a torque wrench for that son of a bitch. Now with our trusty lock in our back wheel, we can torque this down, torque this to 70 to 80 foot pounds. Now we're going to take some red thread locker, put it up on there. Make sure the threads of your nut are already good and cleaned out. Take your nut, this is normal threads, run it on there. And we're going to take our impact on a lower setting, and zip it on there. This has to be torqued to 190 to 210 foot pounds. We're just going to go with really tight initially. There we are. All right, from there, we can take our primary chain wedge. And we're aiming for 190 to 210 foot-pounds here. 
All right, here we go. So we're going, remember when, so when you install these, remember it's friction steel, friction steel. So we already have the steel backing plate then that is in there that is attached to the inner clutch basket. So we will slide the outer one in there, then slide a steel disc in there. Then we're going to do this until we have four friction discs installed. Once we have the fourth friction disc installed, we'll then put the spring plate in. Now I'm reusing my steel discs. I could have bought new ones, but since the friction discs had hardly any wear to them, um, there was no like discoloration, there was no notable warping on them. Uh, we basically decided they're probably all good, so we're going to put them back in there. Hopefully I'm not wrong about that. If they are, we'll be doing another video. And there, right there, just like that is our fourth friction disc. Now we can take our steel spring plate, which will double as a steel, and continue our stack of friction steel, friction steel. Boom, everything's in there. Now we can take our aluminum disc that has the little throw out bearing on it. I guess we're gonna call it our pressure plate, though that's not it's the thing the diaphragm spring pushes up against. We'll call it a pressure plate. Slide that sucker back in there like so. Next, we can set our diaphragm spring in place. This may want to fall out of there, be ready. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take, there's this little step ring. So you have this little step ring, then you have the uh, snap ring that goes on top. Obviously the snap ring we can kind of feed in there, but the step ring, you're definitely gonna to wanna to hang it on there. I'm gonna hang the snap ring on here too, uh, just because getting the whole assembly on there then getting the snap ring in with the tool, kind of a pain. So, from there, take our handy dandy homemade spring compressor there. We're gonna put those up in the center there. We're just kinda supporting them, don't let them fall out. There we go. Then we're gonna take the metal plate we made and put that on there. just like so. We're gonna do our best to eyeball that our ring is center. Now we are gonna take the threaded nut that came out of the clutch and thread that on there. Remembering to hold the shaft there in the center because it's gonna to wanna to spin as you do this. All right, and when it gets close, So as you do this, you want to keep an eye on everything. Make sure the spring is compressing in as it should. Make sure these rings are loose. Make sure nothing's binding up. And just keep cranking this in here. Or you can turn the screwdriver back to the left while holding it. Keep doing that until the spring is compressed all the way in. How do you know when the spring is compressed all the way in? Well, when you look in here, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but you can see the little fingers of the diaphragm spring, and then you can see the groove in here. There is a groove in here. And when the little fingers are beyond the groove, you're pretty much good to go. From there, this is where it's gonna get tricky. You can actually take the snap ring out of here if you'd like. You're gonna take this ring and you're gonna put it up in place there. And the idea is the snap ring pushes against that ring. So we're gonna give it a good look and see if it looks like we are back far enough. And I personally think we should compress it just a wee little bit more. Might have been able to get away with it right there. All right, now it's good and far back in there. 
So push the ring back in. Now, this is probably going to take you a couple tries if this is your first time dealing with snap rings. <clears throat> Thread the snap ring back in there. And then get it started in the groove, maybe on the top or the bottom or wherever is the most convenient for you. Get one corner started in there. Then compress down about 180 from that and try to get the other one started in there if you can. Again, make sure the ring is back in place. The ring that pushes against the diaphragm spring, that is. If this takes a couple times, don't get frustrated. I'm very experienced at this, and this is still fighting me a little bit. There we go. Snapped in just like that. Now, <clears throat> before you take this snap, before you take the compressor off of here, give this a good visual. Is our snap ring in all the grooves? Is that little ring on the back seated in place? Yes, it is. So give it a really good visual. Give it a lot of close attention because there's a lot of pressure on this thing. And if that snap ring is partially out or not in all the way, when you take the tool off of there, it's going to shoot off of there. So wear eye protection too, just to be on the safe side. I gave it a good visual. Now we're going to undo the tool. Ta-da! Ta-da! Trying to drop your specialty tool and your gear oil. Give her a couple little pokes there to make sure everything's in there as it should be. Spring is definitely behind it. All looks well and good. We are good to go. Next step from here is to reinstall the primary cover. Now, take your new gasket. New clean gasket. Put it onto your clean gasket surface. Uh, in this case, we have these little spring pin dowels on here, which is handy because we can whoop, slide the gasket up onto those. So, piece of advice here. Be very careful, uh, keep a close eye on it to make sure your bottom section lines up right there. I once had a gasket droop down, I put the bolts in it, trashed, uh, crimped the gasket, trashed the gasket. Uh, so when you put this on here, make sure the bottom ones are lined up. Matter of fact, once I kind of hang the primary cover on there, I'm going to put a bolt in the bottom one first to make sure that the gasket and everything's lined up down there. Luckily, this gasket has a metal frame, so it won't droop much, but still. Now, take your primary cover, slide it right back on there. Remember, your shifter has to go through the shifter shaft. There's a little bushing on there. You might have to reach underneath and push the chain up to make sure it's on top of the tensioner puck and slide it right back on there. Before you go any further, give it a visual. See if the gasket's sticking out anywhere. Hopefully you kept your bolts in order. I did just off screen. I'm going to slide one in down here. I'm going to put that in a few threads. Checking again for the gasket. I'm going to stick one in up here. Again, checking to make sure the gasket and everything is in place. 
Now you'll notice I only ran these in a few threads. Whenever you're doing any type of large bolt pattern item, especially something that could potentially flex, uh, like a primary co case cover, you want to definitely start all the bolts in and then you want to do it in a crisscross pattern. This is also really important if you have a gasket in there because you don't want the gasket to shift and if you tighten up a couple of them and then you try to put another bolt in somewhere and the gasket slightly shifted, it'll be a pain to get the bolt in there or it could damage a gasket, yada yada yada. Start all the bolts in first. You only got to do it by a few threads. Remember, there's no need to put thread locker on these. Matter of fact, you're better off not doing that. If anything, uh, it wouldn't hurt to put a little blaster or a little bit of oil or something on the threads just to make sure they thread in a little easier, especially in bolt holes that have a bunch of corrosion on them. Now there's definitely a torque pattern to this. And I will follow that pattern, but I will also try to put a little image up here on the screen somewhere. Then maybe you can screenshot it. Or you can get on Google and find it that way too. Or check your service manual if you have one. It's pretty readily available on the internet though. And you'll notice I'm just snugging all these up right now, and then I'm going to go back and torque them in the same pattern. Now we're going to torque these 10 to 12 foot pounds, but check your service manual. Now we have our new O-ring here on our clutch cable. So we're going to reinstall the clutch cable. We're going to thread it in here. And we're going to be very, very careful to make sure we do not cross thread that. We're going to try our darndest to make sure it threads in there straight. And because you're spinning the entire clutch cable, this can be a bit tricky. Have lots of patience with this. To give you a tip, when you're installing this, if you aren't sure on the alignment, remember it's threading into this boss right here. There's a hole going all the way through it. So you can look from the front and make sure you're threading in there straight. Make sure you're not doing, make sure you're not going this way or this way or this way or this way, because that's how you're gonna cross thread it. <clears throat> then tighten this up. Tighten it till you feel the threads just kind of bottom out in there. You're just trying to compress that O-ring. Right there is good to go. If I push the cable in from the other end, you can see it right there, and it's ready to be hooked up down here. Then after that, we'll hook it up with the handlebars. Now for reinstalling this big hole honking assembly here. So the snap ring will go in first. So this is your clutch throw out assembly. To explain how this works, if you look down inside here, there's three ball bearings in there. If you take the snap ring off of there, you could actually see the ball bearings in there. Matter of fact, let's do it. So you can take this snap ring right up off of there Set the snap ring in a safe location. Hold this flat and lift up off of here. Now you can see down in here, I'm going to tilt it to the best of my abilities, whoop, without losing them. There's three ball bearings that go in there, and they ride inside these ramps here. Now is a good time to give a visual inspection of the ball bearings and of the ramps. There should be ramps in here also. 
The big thing you want to make sure is that there is no pitting inside of here. If there's any type of pitting, you know, like little divots, little potholes type thing, any, any of that on the ramp surface or on the ball bearings, you're going to want to replace that. Because when you pull your clutch, this actually rides up and down on and off your clutch. So when you pull your clutch, it pulls the cable and it goes whoop and expands and goes whoop back in. And that's what actually pushes in on the diaphragm spring. So if those are pitted up at all, that's more force it's going to take out of your left hand when you pull the clutch in. So that's a pain. Nobody wants that. Now, if you're wondering which way it goes in here, this little pin here, or the boss, goes 180 degrees from this piece down here. Remember, it slides in this notch, and then this cable hooks into that little dew sucker right that goes into here. So, next, we'll reinstall the snap ring on here now that we inspected it. Make sure it's down in our little groove there, which it is. So the next thing you're going to want to do is take your clutch cable. Hopefully you can see that. You're going to want to take your clutch cable and you're going to want to hook it back onto there. You'll see it kind of pops in, pulls forward, locks itself in place. Take this, start almost all the way down. Spin it all the way up to 12 o'clock and should just slide right back on in there. Now, take this shouldered nut, I guess is what we're going to call it, and it goes in there shoulder first. Make sure there's no dirt and debris in there. You're going to have to hold that flat inside there with a flathead screwdriver and then spin that nut right onto the shaft. Should thread on there nice and easy. If it, bide, if it uh, binds up in any way, something's wrong. Once you get it in there so far to where the hex starts grabbing this whole throw-out assembly, that'll hold it in place, and you can back this off of here. Or basically turn it to the left and set that nut down inside of there. So when setting the throw-out play or the backlash or whatever you want to call it, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to set the distance that this thing has to expand before it compresses the um, uh, diaphragm spring in there. So we're going to turn this in as in righty tighty because what's going to happen is it's going to thread in there and it's going to make this whole assembly really loose. So what happens is when you pull your clutch in, it goes like this, it expands out, you let your clutch out. It goes back here and ramps down. So take this, rock it back and forth, find that seated all the way in place. Then take your flathead screwdriver, back this screw out to the left. And you're going to do this with a really, really light touch on your fingers. You're going to go until it makes contact, or you'll feel it just stop. And at that point, that whole throwout assembly has now clamped together onto the ball bearing. So right there, if you go any more, you're going to start pushing the diaphragm spring in and basically be pulling in the clutch just a wee little bit. We don't want that. Also, you need to have just a wee little bit of clearance so oil gets in there around the ball bearings too. So we thread it till it stopped, and then we're going to back it off maybe a little less than an eighth of a turn. So to give you an example, stopped is about 10.30. You know, if we're looking at the slot of the screwdriver, we're going to take it to about 1130, not even all the way at 12 o'clock. And that's it. It stays right there. Now, when you reinstall your clutch cover, what's going to, or your derby cover, you have this little nut here with the spring washer on it. And it's got two little flats. When you slide this in here, it's going to grab the flats that are on this shaft. And then the spring against the cover will hold it all in place. And that's going to lock your setting in place right there. Setting the primary chain tension. We have to take the inspection cover off right up here. And that is, on this one, it takes a 5 30 seconds Allen key. And we can thread it right on out of there. I broke these free before I hit record. Saves a lot of grief in camera shooting world.
And you should be able to just kind of hook this, whoop, your fingertips or a screwdriver, take it right on out of there. Factory specs for this are half inch, half inch to three eighths tension. So we're gonna split the difference and I'm gonna set my dial calipers at uh, about seven sixteenths. So that is basically the distance that this is sticking out down here. Now you can take a clean screwdriver and you can move it and you can see, oh my gosh, we're way out. Of course we are, we haven't set the tension yet. But you'll be setting it from where the bottom of it is and we only want it to go up to right about there. You can use a ruler for this, tape measure, whatever you want. I have the dial calipers on hand, so I'm using that one. So down here at the bottom, you can take your quarter inch Allen wrench and you're gonna thread this up in here. Remember the nut is already broke free on this. Now the change adjustment, you can break this free with your big old seven eighths wrench. And you hold the Allen screw with a quarter inch wrench and just beep, crack it free. Now we have this backed way off of here. So now I'm gonna take this primary tensioner screw or the quarter inch Allen I'm going to crank it in until I see the chain start lifting up. Once I start see it start lifting up, I'm going to check it again. And basically what I'm doing is I just moved it until it started taking slop out of it and now where we're going now we're going to see where we're at. So really I'm just kind of eyeballing this to the end that's sticking out here. And oh man, that's a that's actually pretty good. Wow. I was expecting to have to go a little further. I don't. Cool. We're going to leave it right there. So we're going to hold that in place with our quarter inch wrench. Then we're going to take our seven eighths and we're going to just tighten her up. There we go. Now we're going to check this again. And that looks pretty good. From there, we're gonna put the cover back on. So use a new gasket if you have it. These are kind of reusable gaskets. At least just make sure it's clean and put her back up on there. Thread both these up on there and torque them to spec. So route your clutch cable wherever it is it needs to be routed. Get your clutch cable ready. You can put this little plastic pin through there. Take that back out of there. So take, get your clutch cable ready. Slide the big eyelet through the clutch lever. Install this little plastic bushing here that holds the clutch in place. And then there's a groove right here that's what your cable is going to slide through. Now, with that bushing, with the cable attached to the bushing, slide your clutch lever in. Slide the cable through that groove. Then, take the pin you took out, slide it back into the clutch. Then from there, you can take your snap ring that you took off, your teeny tiny little snap ring, and you can reinstall your snap ring into that groove on the bottom of the lever. Obviously you still need to adjust the slop in there, but everything should be a re should be firmly attached now. Now on your clutch cable, slide your rubber slinky thing up out of the way. And remember the bottom one of this spins. So you can spin that hopefully with your hand. And as you're doing this, it's essentially making the sheathy on the cable longer. Make sure this jam nut's just loose and hanging out in the middle. So you're gonna crank that cable sleeve until that gap closes. This gap right here closes up on the lever. Once that closes up, go a little bit more there. Make sure this part of the cable's seated in there nice and tight. Even give the clutch a couple pulls. Make sure it's not going anywhere. Now you just want to have just a teeny tiny little bit of play right there. 
So we're gonna back the adjuster off just a wee little bit till we have just a wee little bit of play. Just enough to, oh, right there. Just enough to verify that the clutch cable is loose inside the sheathing. Now that you have that set, you can run the lock nut up. Hold it with one wrench, or hold the cable with one wrench, jam, lock the jam nut down with the other. Just like that. Then put your rubber slinky back over it. Reinstall your little clips or whatever holds your cable to the frame. Now that everything's back and buttoned up, we can add some gear oil. I'm putting 7590 weight in there. You can use whatever you choose. I'm using Lucas, synthetic. Why am I using Lucas? Because it's a name brand that was on sale. No one gives me any free oil yet. If anyone does, I'll be happy to shamelessly endorse your product. Fucking sh Jesus Christ. Here's a key step. You see this right here? You have to put the drain plug back in the, the uh, primary before you put the oil in. Take your drain plug. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it has a new O-ring in there. Thread it back in. Sigh in disgust with yourself. Tighten her up. Wait a minute, what size is that? That's a 11 16. It's a 5 8. Where'd my 5 8 wrench go? Tighten her up. Jesus, I can't believe I did that. Put the rest of the oil in there. Now, uh, now I'm gonna have to go buy a little more gear oil just to fill this sucker up. Take your spring nut, or the nut with the spring on it, slide it up on there wherever it lines up. Take your gasket, all nice and clean, onto your clean surface here, slide it into the groove. If it doesn't stick, you can take a little general purpose grease and put it on the gasket, and that will help it stick in place. Now you're ready to reinstall your clutch cover. You have this little bump right here, doo -doo, and that goes over the little bump right here where your clutch cable goes. The spring should go into this, the spring there should go into this center disc. So if you look at it from the side as you're installing it, you should be able to see it drop right in there. Then hold it up in place. Careful not to jiggle it around as you do it because you can knock the gasket out. and thread a screw or two back in here. Keep pushing on it until you get two screws in. Make sure they're on opposite sides. That way the cover doesn't go crooked and the gasket doesn't pop out. It's happened to me before. And just make those finger tight just enough to hold the cover in place. Now tighten these up in a crisscross pattern. And of course, torque them to spec afterwards. Now that that's completed, we can reinstall our shifter. To reinstall the shifter, slide your little rubber grommet back on there. Take your shifter itself. Remember to remove your bolts. Slide it back on there in the location you had it, which I can still see with our black magic marker. and tighten that up. I'm gonna take my size of this. Can't see it. 5 16 Allen socket, or eight millimeters if that's all you have. And spin the bolts in there. Get the first one by a few threads. Put 
the second one in by a few threads. And run them all the way in there. And of course, torque them to spec. All right, it's all back together. Wipe all your greasy handprints off it. Check to make sure your clutch works properly and you are ready to go for a ride. That's all I got.